So that was some collective improvisation there at the end, right? Just a break. No, those, the the, the, that's what I told them to do, and, and they did it well, I thought. But they sounded fantastic. So I have before me a cover on Liberty which says, Learn play bongos with Mr. Bongo himself, Jack Costanza. <laughs> Oh. Tell that's us about I, this. Tell that's when I was this. young and adorable. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually you talking about how to learn to play the instrument, right? Yeah, I, and Ira Cook, I mean, before, you, way after I, uh, Ira Cook, he did a narration on the, on the, on the record. And it's, it's interesting, he knew what that, but it, I don't think it's the best of, of the Learn to Play Bongos album, but it's a nice one. And, but it was the only thing that was going on at the time. Well, he, he, that, that's right, it was the only thing that was going on. Now I'm going to ask you to, to indulge me. I would like for you to demonstrate uh. on the bongo drums your art, please. I would love to hear you play. I'm used to playing this with 20 other musicians. <laughs> <laughs> I need their support. <laughs> this is the martillo beat, which is the basic beat for bongos. That's the basic beat. In the old days, the bands in Cuba didn't use conga drums. They weren't used in bands in the, the late 30s and, or early 30s. In, a man called Arsenio Rodriguez. He was a blind three-string guitar player. And he brought combo drums into a band, the first one that ever did it. And that was in the very, very early 40s. So until then, everything was bongos, the main instrument. And uh, the bands were called song bands, some Changui bands. And uh, Casita de la Playa was the biggest band that ever came out of Cuba. And their bongo player, Ramon Cito, uh, was the only percussion instrument, not counting the piano and the bass, of course. So that's the way it was then. And this was this was the main beat. Vegas lounge dance group. We were entertaining, but it was also danceable, but not Latin music. Okay. In the 60s, except for going to Puerto Rico in 68 with a band, it was no, no Latin whatsoever. In the 70s, 
70, no land whatsoever. We did go to Puerto Rico in 68 for a season, and I bought, put a, bed, a Latin bed together, and we did very well, very well. I was, it was a very marvelous engagement. Uh, Pat Rodriguez of the Timbales, who played with Tito Rodriguez, yes. and he, was, he brought a New York style to our band. And then there was uh, Al Escobar. You, you may know these names. Al sitting right here. Who's I, Al? Al Escobar sitting no, right there. No, he's not. He's right there. My Al Escobar? Your Al Escobar is right there. Let me see him. Where is he? <laughs> Where are you, Al? Ah! <laughs> How are you, Al? <laughs> Good to see you. Good to see you. Oh, he came so far to see me. I'm so, I, I'm really honored that you came, Al. That's very nice of you. Did you ever see Mota? Tell her I said hello. <laughs> oh my goodness! We had a band in Puerto Rico, not only Alice here outside. We had a band that we took to Puerto Rico, and Al was the pianist. And Al was a marvelous piano player. And we tore up, may I, I don't like the brag. We tore up Puerto Rico, San Juan. We were at the San Juan Hotel, and we had a nine week engagement that was fabulous. And on the breaks, Al was upstairs winning all the money in the gambling machine. <laughs> <laughs> and they, the, 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 the manager came up and he says, tell Al Escobar he can't come up here anymore. <laughs> Al didn't pay any attention to it. <laughs> uh, oh, nice to see you. That's, that's nice. Very nice. So we have another important record. If I'd known Al was here, is there a piano here? There's not. We didn't bring one out because we didn't. No, but I just said I would have played. No, I'm just playing now. I play badly. <laughs> Viva Tirado. Mr. Jack Constanzo featuring Jerry. Oh. I recorded of my own that are under my own name are uh, maybe 16 to 17 albums. If, I, if then anyone asked me, did you ever record a, an, an album or put out an album that you're sorry you put out? This is the one. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. I, there's a gentleman named Gene Norman in this town that has a record company called Crescendo Records. And she, my first recording was for him, a, a, a different album. I had made a demo. I put the band together, I, which I paid for, and we did all these songs that I was to, to take the gene. This is what I, uh, this is the band I've got. I want to record it. But Gene says, no, we'll just use the demos. These are the demos. <laughs> <laughs> I wish he'd have kept them. <laughs> it's okay. Jerry Woo's, the, the Jerry Woo's a nice singer, a gorgeous lady. She, that's a terrible picture of her. She would, she would, she would, she would just love to take this picture and never let it be seen again as long as she lives. <laughs> well, what can I say? That, you know, if I don't like something, I don't like it. No, yes, that is not. Like it. <laughs> but it is, it is titled Viva Tirado. That's a no. Uh, if, there's, if, if if someone said if you had to lose an album, which one? That's would you the be? one. You just got it. <laughs> Okay. See, there are some sides on there that are good. Don't but get me wrong. Viva Tirado is it's very, very good. It's very good. That's a big good one. Guantanamera Gerald Wilson's is very good. Absolutely. Uh, 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 La Bamba, Mambo, Bamba, that's good. So it isn't completely a, a turkey. But it's <laughs> no, it's a, no a turkey. it's a good record. You it's, just have very high standards. This is a nice record. Now, this record. Yeah, this is. This doing Cha Cha Cha. Now, this, this album is called Mr. Bongo Cha Cha Cha. It is on, at the very least now, six different labels. <laughs> oh, they, everybody creates uh, piracy in, in this business. Right. This is, I don't know whose label this one is. Who, who is it? Golden, Golden Tone? Golden Tone. I, mean, I, I, I never heard of them. <laughs> but it's on classic, Golden Tone, and an, uh, a place in, in, uh, in Spain, I forgot the name of the guy's uh, the label, and it's on, I don't know, at least five or six different companies. The original company went out of business, so, but it is a, this album is okay. I'm not ashamed of that album. <laughs>
it's you in front there. That's me in my glory. And it's very rare to actually see any Latin jazz or, or Cuban music Let me with a bongo player as the artist. Uh, right? Usually usually a, a, a bongo or a percussionist is a supporting musician uh, in, in this kind of music with Jack. I, I lucked out. These ruffles, as you can see, can you see the ruffles? Now, they got, they rented these for me to, to take the picture. <laughs> these ruffles were old, old style then. Now, this record is 40 years old. <laughs> so, 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 really. These are called guaracheras. These ruffles are called guaracheras. In the Caribbean and, and in Cuba and Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, the, the artists that would play high profile ballroom salon jobs would wear these these ruffles right as part of their uniform uh, at the Tropicana in Cuba. This is what they would wear. The dancers would wear these these ruffles, and it was just. It was and in fact, if you if you if you see the Desi Arnaz mm -hmm. uh, television shows, you see the musicians always wearing these these ruffles. In fact, you did play with Desi, did you? Yeah. Well, Kuga had his rhythm section playing the, wearing the water jacket, you know? right? And it, it was very. You know, very flamboyant. You know, who got a lot of movies? Oh, he did. You know, he had the little ch Chihuahua doll. Remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh God! Incredible. So let's talk about what you did in the seventies. In the seventies. In the seventies. Well, I got poor. <laughs> I didn't do much. I worked. I always worked. I was. In that regard, I, I had a nice career. I always worked. What kind of gigs were you doing? Recordings? What was going on? I didn't record much in the 70s. In fact, I don't think I recorded at all in the 70s. And I didn't record in the 80s. And I didn't record much at all in the 90s. There's 30 years there that I didn't do any recording. So there's, you know, there's a lot of people passed me up as far as how many recordings they were doing. Now, I did record a lot of records in my time. Mm -hmm you know, in the 50s and beginning 60s. Tons and tons of records then, and that was fine. And, uh, but but uh, like I say, I was married to, to uh, Jerry Wu, and uh, she was uh, like the, the, the very vibrant part of the band. Mm -hmm. And I was featuring her and not myself, which is okay. Because she, you know, she turned out to be a good singer, she was gorgeous. She wore different gowns every set. You know, we spent all our money on her gowns. <laughs> and uh, so that was what we did. I did in the 70s and part of the 80s. Uh, so the comeback. Then I did two, I went, I didn't go to Cuba. But I mean, I went to Cuba seven times. But in, in. What year was that? The first time was 51, 53, and 55. That's what that was. Took. That was before the revolution. Pre, yeah. Before the, then in '98 I went again. In '99 I went again. In 2001 I went. No, 2002 I went again. And in 2003 I went again. And then Bush Bush put out that that uh, anybody caught in Cuba will be fined twenty five thousand dollars. And I thought I'd better not go anymore. <laughs> <laughs> They're waiting for me. And and going to Cuba inspired you to, to to once again start recording? No. No. I loved Cuba. That's why I went to You just Cuba. went no. the recording I decided I, I decided I wanted to, to do recording again. And I went to Cuba, Mike McFadden who you know, and uh, Cuba Records. Cuba Records. Yeah. But the, the parent company is ubiquity. Now I went to Mike, told him what I wanted to do. He says, can you do it under this budget? And I, I wasn't sure. I told him, yes. Well, I was $2,000 short. <laughs> well, all his budgets and were And he was not small. happy. All his budgets were small. <laughs> so I made, I, made, I made Back From Havana, which uh, needs to be really played with a, a, a lot of, you know, to, to make whatever's there come out. It, it, right. And, uh, and then I made another one called Scorching the Skins. In fact, it's out in front, the both of them are, in case someone is interested in buying it. Fine, I get a, I get a royalty, I'll be happy to accept it. 
<laughs> I always say, if you want to take Jack home with you, there's CDs in the lobby. <laughs> you know, years ago, I never promoted my CDs. I never, everybody would always talk to and I never did that. I, I, I don't know, I was, I was embarrassed or whatever it is. And now I don't care. My CDs are there. If you're going to buy them, I'll be happy. If you don't be buy them, I won't be so happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jack, we are uh, really fortunate to have you with us because it's my pleasure. You, I, I, you I have, love uh, being doing this, what we're doing, especially when I know what you've got in mind, and that's great. Well, you are part of the history, and in a very important part of the history, and we certainly want to make sure that you're very well represented in it. Well, I appreciate that. And, uh, but we've also re reached the, the time of the show where the portion of the program where you can actually ask Jack questions rather than me have to ask him, you can actually ask questions. So if, if I don't hear you, it's because my hearing aids are down. <laughs> but you'll tell me if I don't hear what you I will tell you. If they have questions, I don't know. Any questions for Jack? Yes, Eddie. Did you travel in Europe? Did you tour outside of Did Asia? you travel and tour in Europe? I, I did a, a tour in, in, London, in England in uh, 19... No, it was 2000. Two, it might have been 2001, the end of 2000. And uh, I did four concerts. And I used mostly... I took my... Uh, uh, did I take my... No, I used a band called Grupo X in, in London, and they are absolutely marvelous. And we toured for, for I think, four or five different cities. Are the, music, are the musicians British, or they were? They're London. They're London raised. My, Simon Finch And is, they're called Grupo X. Yeah, they're well Incredible, known. incredible. Great. Yeah, and uh, the leader is, is Johnny um, Enright. Fabulous trombone player, and his trumpet player is just as fabulous, Simon Finch. If there was anyone that someone said you think could play alongside of Gilbert Castellanos, it would be him. It would be Simon. And so the band was, and we were very successful. I'm gr grateful for that. Yeah. And then in uh, 2003, I did the with my with the uh, North Sea Jazz Festival which was, it's a very, I was pleased to be on it because it's a very prestigious concert. And uh, we did well. That is a major jazz festival in the North Sea. Guess who was there, also on the bill? Spanish Harlem. <laughs> Spanish Harlem is the, the big band of the director who was here. Was it the last, the last, uh, the, the last year? Oscar, Oscar Hernandez. Hernandez was here with us. Yeah, he's a, a, marvel, he's a, he's a real gentleman musician. and what a talent. He's a fantastic musician. Yeah. Yeah. They, in my estimation, Spanish Harlem is the best salsa band in this country. That's my estimation. And I believe that sincerely. They are just a swinging group. And uh, Oscar writes those arrangements boy, they bite. <laughs> he's a good, good so, writer. Very yeah. good writer. So if somebody wanted to say, well, I'd like to hear some really good salsa. You want to hear Spanish song. Eddie Palmieri is marvelous. Marvelous. He also a great uh, salsa band. And, uh, In fact, we have his bass player here. Who is that? <laughs> Eddie Resto is a bass player. Oh, oh he comes. He comes. He, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he played with Eddie. Yeah, he's, he's played with Eddie and Oscar, both. Oscar uh, now lives in Granada. Oh, he's a, he's a marvelous bass player. If yeah, you want to introduce fantastic. him now, I'll, I'll sit here and shut up while you introduce him. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions for Ms. Costanzo? Yes, Steve. I wanted uh, uh, Jack to talk about his uh, experience um, in the mid to late 40s in New York with the birth of Bebop on 52nd Street with people like uh, Charlie Parker and Thelonious Monk and uh, Bud Powell and Kenny Clark. Um, I played with them all. Yeah, besides being a friend of Jack's, he was just a very much a supporter of, um, of bebop music, and I'd like him to elaborate on that, please. So, Steve asked the question, and he would like for you to elaborate on the experiences that you had with the bebop musicians who were creating. When, when I music. joined Ketton in '47, 
bebop was in its, uh, what's the glory, if you want to say it. You had <coughs> Max Roach on the drums. You had Danny Tristano. You had uh, uh, Bud Powell, who I played with. He, he paid me such a great compliment. I, I never, I never ever want to forget it because I felt so good. I sat in with him at Birdland, and when I was done, he came over and shook my hand. He says, what a pleasure it is to play, to play with a combo drummer who knows how to play the jazz. And that, that was such a compliment that I, I loved it. And uh, Charlie Parker was beyond my comprehensive. He was so great that I don't know enough about music to appreciate him to the full extent. But you, I, I wasn't dumb. I knew, what he, I knew that he was playing some marvelous things. I just wasn't smart enough to, to, to understand. Well, at that time, there were a lot of people who just didn't understand what he was doing, except for the fact that they understood that he was doing something marvelous. They just hadn't. That's true. Got, they hadn't gotten used to it yet you, until they finally says, "Oh, I understand what he's saying." What? But they did, not a lot of people knew. Oh, it's, uh, you know, they, they you went to people's houses and they <clears throat> they they had dark dark houses with and playing Charlie Parker and this. Diz and uh, uh, Stan Kenton or, and Charlie, they played all these bands and they, some of them smoking joints and stuff like that, which, <laughs> which you know, I was around it even if I didn't use it. And that's my first advice to everybody, stay off of drugs, because that's the worst thing you can get involved with. Uh, and I've said it. Uh, <laughs> so Charlie Parker, was probably the greatest bebop player that ever lived. I have to say that's my opinion. Diz, Diz was great, but there was only one Charlie Parker. There are a lot of great trumpet players, but there, I've never heard anybody can play like Charlie Parker. And Bud Powell, as you know, he was a genius pianist on bebop. And uh, Curly Russell, marvelous. Fats Navarro, marvelous. Uh, Charlie Mingus, Bass player, marvelous. I, I, I played and uh, knew all of them, and it, it was a very exciting part of my life when I was in New York at all those times. And they, they helped me fulfill what I had to do. Now, did you know them from 52nd Street, or did you actually know them from, from Minton's Playhouse in Harlem? I knew them. I knew them from uh, uh, Birdland. So you knew them from 52nd Street, okay. That, that, there was a whole... Well, there was a whole thing. There was the place where, uh, I, well, God, I can't remember the girl's name, Georgia something? Anyway, that had individual, they'd come in there with trios and things, all the several clubs in that area. Right. And the, uh, can't remember his first name, Napoleon, the drummer, and he, he worked very much on that street. And uh, Ellis, something Ellis. Take the food horn. Anyway, it's too long. For, it's too long ago for me to remember some of these names, but I remember seeing Condido playing jazz for the first time I saw him because before that the Latin players weren't playing jazz. They were playing as did uh, as, they, as did Chano. They were playing Latin rhythms when they sat in with a jazz band. They were playing the same way they did with the Latin, and they weren't making it. They weren't playing with something compatible to jazz. Mm -hmm. Now Machito, he never played jazz in the rhythm section. He only played jazz in the horns. And Mario Bowser and Rene Hernandez made arrangements that had jazz sounds and, and jazz chords, and, and so really Machito was probably the first Latin jazz band around. Right, that was that, that they had percussionists who were sensitive enough to a swing field as well as to a straight ahead field. Well, they didn't play jazz. Right. The percussions. Right. They played what they play all the time. Right. The thing was, the, the thing about them and unique was well, how the horns were arranged. And you know, Rene and Mario Bowser arranged the horns. They had a jazz sound. And, right. and the people loved it. And they also played typical Cuban music. Right. But the, were, but the rhythm section still played straight? Yeah. They didn't swing the rhythms? No. Okay. Not swing as you and I are talking about. Them. Right. Exactly. They swung, but in the Latin style. Right. And uh, it, 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 it was a marvelous band. I don't think I can remember a big band that played like Machito. 
I don't know of any. If there is, I don't know. That it. was his Afro-Cubans, right? Much yeah. Machismo and his Afro-Cubans? Well, we, we, Kenton was a, a, a uh, Machito, big fan of Machito. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he, in fact, he, he, he uh, recorded a song called Machito that people wrote. Right. And uh, that was recorded without Latin rhythms. Right. The artist he's talking about is a gentleman by the name of Frank Rio. But that's spelled G I G I G R I L L O, Y squared equals L squared equals Y in the Spanish language, and he was called Little Man, Machito. But he had an incredible orchestra and his Afro Cubans, and this was one of the first orchestras in New York that actually used jazz musicians in the horn section with a Latin rhythm section, an all Latino rhythm section, and. What Jack and I are talking about, or was he explaining, is that it was one of the first bands that was able to successfully use jazz musicians and Latin rhythms in the same in the same orchestra, and that they had the sensitivity. Well, that orchestra really played straight ahead. But part of what Jack was talking about that the Latino musicians, it took them a while to take their Latin rhythms, which are very straight uh, in terms of how they're they're played, how they're interpreted to learn how to swing in the jazz vein. So you could see that there's, there's this great deal of, of learning that's going on and excitement between people learning how to play straight Latin rhythms and then Latin players learning how to play straight swing rhythms or string rhythms so that they can actually make music together. That's and you true. were in the middle of all of that. I was, number one, I had a problem because <laughs> the, the, all the Latin drummers resented the fact that I was, that Stan didn't hire a Latin player, you know, and Stan said I hired who I thought could do the best job for me. And uh, I, I can't help but, <laughs> and I would have helped if I could. <laughs> right, right, but you, but you, but you understood the difference. Oh, you were able to, sure, you were I was able a to dancer, that, I that danced jitterbug. Right. So, so, I mean, I, I, I knew with the dotted A, you know, choo, 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 I, I knew what that meant. Right. And I knew how to make, you know what I the instrument I was playing fit with that and be compatible because I sure couldn't play Latin like the Latin players could be at that time. I was you know I was a beginner on Latin music. So so the, so the interesting thing about about your artistry is that you actually learned how to play the rhythms through dance. So in other words, you were listening to the music through your feet, <laughs> right? And well, that's what I we say. And that's what we say in the Caribbean that. How you respond and how you listen to to music is through your feet, actually. Right? It's how you dance to it, and that's the interesting thing about Latin jazz is that the rhythms are divorced from the dance movement, but the players always come with that sensitivity. They bring that sensitivity to it, and that's what you were able to do with Hopefully. with the swing rhythms. Yeah. 